Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're looking at future proofing the monitor for the Commodore PET 4032. And to do that we need to open it up and basically replace all the capacitors in the unit. So the box is uh, booting up fine and looks like we're ready to tackle on this little project. Here on the back of the unit we see a warning label high danger high voltages so please do not do this work unless you are qualified to do so. To remove the housing is pretty simple it's just two screws located at the very back and this is the probe that I'll be using to discharge the monitor itself which itself has the high voltages in it. The ground plug is on the back it's right there we can just clip onto that and then use our probe to stick inside the looks like a suction cup of the monitor and discharge it safely. Now that the back of the monitor is off, we can start discharging. Wearing gloves helps to protect your hands. No rings, no watches, no jewelry. And ensure that the probe is set to the ground. It could be, in this case, it's on the back, but it could be on the monitor itself. It could, it's uh, all metal, so you can clip it to the side of the monitor if you want it. But I like to use this ground plug right here. We'll clip that on, and now we're ready to go. So what we do is we place that monitor inside the connection there to the monitor until we hit the metal piece. There's a metal piece inside is actually like a clip and that will discharge the monitor. The trick is getting it under that uh, little suction cup rubber component there. Once it's inside you can feel around and feel the metal piece. If the monitor it does have a charge you'll get a spark and in this case you'd see it on the reading on the meter. But the meter showing is zero, so there's no voltage in there it's safely to remove. Another option, if you don't have that, is a screwdriver with some wire. You can connect the wire to the ground. In this case, I'll connect it to the side of the monitor. And the other end, which is the uh, attached to the screwdriver, you place the screwdriver underneath, again, that rubber component. Make sure your fingers do not touch the shaft of the unit, or you will be unpleasantly surprised of how much the voltage can hurt. <laughs> In order to take the the actual component off you need pliers to pinch the connectors together so it actually pulls out of the actual tube itself. Here is a better view of that and uh, we just basically pinch it and pop it out. Putting it back in is the same thing you just pinch it, pop it back into the hole and you're good to go. Next, before we start doing other work, we, have, we take a look at everything, make sure everything looks not burnt or destroyed or damaged. Here we're pulling off the connectors. This one comes off and goes back in one way because it has a plastic piece. Ensure that before you start taking things out, you take your phone and take pictures of it. Because you don't want to be plugging cables in the wrong spot. So take lots of pictures if you're not sure where things go and you want to make sure that they're in the right spot or you'll blow up your monitor, blow up the board, you'll catch fire who knows what else can be done. So now we remove the four screws and all the connectors to the board. They come up pretty easily actually so it's not a problem to remove this stuff. The front two screws which are closest to the tube are a bit of an angle so you have to ensure that you have a long enough handled screwdriver or shaft on the screwdriver to pull it out. Once it's done you pull off the backing of the actual tube and the board is ready to come out. The board looks pretty clean. I'm inspecting it here to see if there's any damaged components, blown capacitors, resistors, transistors, any visual uh, damage including underneath. On this side is a bit of dirt but other than that it's in mint condition. There's no damage, very little dust, the neat thing with the board is that the labeling on both the front and the back 
are there so that when you're removing components you can see exactly which ones what the location is to remove it now before I like to start I always make sure that I look at one of the highest um, the highest voltage rated capacitor and I take my multimeter set it to the highest setting and measure the capacitor just to double check that that capacitor has actually been discharged here we're showing zero volts so it's safe to pull out I've noticed in the visual inspection that one of the capacitors is bulging. This dark blue one at the top has a flat surface, but the one beside it, which is the light blue color, the shorter one, has a bulge on the top of the capacitor. This means that that capacitor is ready to die, explode, etc. And we don't want that because it releases a goo onto the board, which is corrosive. So it's a good thing that we're actually looking at this monitor today and getting rid of that uh, bad capacitor. Now it's time to do uh, do some more inspection. And what I have to do is I have to put a red dot on all the capacitors so that when I replace them, at the end I know that every capacitor should have no dot on it. If there's a dot, it means I forgot to replace that capacitor. All the capacitors have been replaced. This is the last one. Solder it in and remove the excess wires. Clean it up and put it back into the monitor. Here we go back to our phone and we can review where all the cables go back in. So you're ensuring that everything's plugged back the way it was before you pulled it apart. And that piece goes on nice and snug. Final piece. You can use a screwdriver to, uh, sorry, the pliers to repinch that connector to put it back in. You can push in one side and then the other to put it back on. But pliers work great too, so why not use the pliers? Here I have a bit of a time getting it on because that pla the plastic, uh, the rubber suction component there uh, kept flipping back, but I eventually got it in. As you'll see in a moment, yeah, I'm playing around with it. There we go. It's it. Will it work? Yes, it's coming up. And it looks just fine. That's great. So we know that the work we've done is actually working. So let's try a couple of commands just to make sure the rest of the machine is working. In this case, I'm going to be typing a little hello type program and left to pardon my finger pecking like a chicken here because I'm at an angle with the monitor and the, the camera in the way, so I couldn't really type properly. Little basic program. Make a list and let's run it. And there we go. Looks very good. Still centered. Monitors showing no signs of uh, weirdness. I think it's ready to go. But before we do that, I would like to put on a, a program called Wedge. It comes um, with the SD to PET uh, cartridge. And what that does is it allows you to uh, shorten commands. So instead of typing catalog, you can type, um, I believe it's, uh, what is it? The uh, ampersand and dollar. So here we go, load wedge, and it's comma eight. Once that's loaded, we run it. Now there's all the commands are shortened, have abbreviated uh, uh, settings to it, so it's a lot easier to use instead of remembering all the big long commands to do stuff. So we're going to load up a game, up arrow, 
INV for in, in, invaders and run. Here's a diagram for the sound if you want to put sound on your computer for the, this particular game. And as we see, Space Invaders is up and running. And let's see the quick little demo and go from there. All the demos working. The uh, monitor looks fine, no problems. So that's it for t for this episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and find it educational. Thanks for all my new subscribers and my current subscribers. And we'll see you.